Yeah, look at the camera. What the hell are you looking at? I was looking at the truck. What's up, YouTube? We're going to give you all the updated skid build as promised in our past videos. Since, since the last... God dang, who, who is it? Damn, it been recording the whole time. Why you didn't stop it? Because I didn't think about it. I was trying to answer the phone. No. Anyway, we got an updated skid build from the last time y'all saw it in the back of Kale's truck. We've since then bought a new truck, stickered it all up, and upgraded a few other things. It's not very much. It's pretty much the same as it was last time we videoed the skid build. But there is a few things that we have upgraded, and Kale's going to tell y'all about it. So, basically... We bought a 1999 F450 flatbed, threw our logos on it, did a couple small maintenance things, put a box on it on the back just for our fuel cans, any ropes, surfactant bucket, other buckets, boots, anything, just an extra storage area to take up some space on the 11 foot bed that it came with. We did manage to get this out of my truck, put the skid and bolted it down. Uh, we played with the option of actually taking and breaking down the skid or selling the skid and just building out with a bigger tank and building a system, everything individually bolted down to the truck. And if we ever need the truck for any other uses, we only have eight bolts to pull out and we can take the truck wherever, haul whatever, and then put the skid on after when we're done to get back to washing. We also mounted this box on the bottom. That was the box that originally came with the skid that was on the other side where the hose reels are, hose reels are that we're about to show y'all. Um, we figured it'd be a good idea to mount it under the truck, give us a few extra storage space, a few more. What am I trying to say? He's on the 30-yard line, the 20, the 10. <laughs> a little extra storage space. Touchdown! To put wands or tarps or anything like that. That way we're not running a battery in this box with all the tarps and getting wet and everything like that. Water's not good around electricity. Since the last time that y'all saw the skid in the back of the truck, we have upgraded to an AR-45 gas roof pump, and we did have to go ahead and change out our blend manifold to a three-quarter, three-quarter valves and fittings, and upgrade all of our hose sizes. We really enjoy the gas pump. It shoots a lot further, gets a lot more oomph behind it for hard to reach areas. It puts out a lot more volume. We started out with a five. We went to a seven gallon per minute electric pump. You're dealing with batteries dying, pumps going out different things like that. It was a lot of headache, a lot of money. So we went ahead and invested in the gas roof pump and we don't have any complaints with it so far. We've been running it probably almost close to, what, six to eight months? Yeah, I'd say. I mean, we don't really baby it, but as long as you take care of it, rinse it out after every use, do your proper oil changes on the pump and your motor, things are gonna last, especially the Hondas. Yeah, same thing with all of our pressure, or both of our pressure washers as well. Haven't had any issues with those. Just keep up the maintenance on them and it's worked great for us. And our pressure washers, we run those sometimes 24 to 48 hours nonstop on some of our bigger commercial facilities. So. And like I was saying, instead of having everything bolted down and if we ever needed the truck to haul anything, which I doubt we will, but things may come up. Uh, we went ahead and it's only four bolts on the skid, four bolts on here, and we can yank everything off in one go set it down with a forklift or the tractor with the forks and we can take off in the truck, do what we need to do, put everything back on and get to washing. So for the blend manifold on a 12 volt, the difference in the hose sizes is it's half inch coming off of your chemical and your water and then a quarter inch coming off of your surfactant line. For this pump, we had to upgrade all of the hoses, replumb everything into our water tank and our chemical tank. It requires bigger hoses because it's sucking so much more liquid through it. So it's upgraded. We upgraded to a three quarter inch coming off of the water and the chemical valve. And then uh, the feed hose is. And then the feed one hose inch. going to the pump is one inch. So it requires a little bit bigger hoses. So it does require redoing all of your plumbing if you're going from a 12 volt to a gas roof pump. Everything on this side of the skid pretty much stayed the same. That's how we had it hooked up in the back of Kale's truck last time. Just a filter going straight to the pressure washer from the water tank. We're able to unscrew that, drain the water tank if we need to. 
Now we don't necessarily have to drain the water tank every day, being that it's a lot more heavy duty truck than kills. So we don't ever drain this tank. We do drain, we do drain the tank on the trailer just because it's still a single axle trailer and we don't like to haul all that weight around of having a full water tank. So yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for the skid build. Y'all stay tuned. We do have a trailer swap video coming up. Um, we're gonna be upgrading to a tandem axle trailer. That way we are able to support more weight and we're gonna be doing a video on that built out from scratch, showing the full build of a trailer and how we like to set up all of our equipment and everything. We're also gonna have a video coming up in the future we're gonna be doing a comparison video of the AR45 and our 12 volt on the trailer to show you the difference in the hose sizes, the difference in reach you can achieve out of a gas pump versus the 12 volt and different things like that. So y'all also stay tuned for that as well. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And if you got any questions about any of this equipment, go ahead and comment and we'll see y'all next time.